Hey, seventh graders, and welcome to 4.3. Today we'll be discussing solving proportions. Okay, and uh, our main objective, what we want to be able to do today, is solve proportions by using cross products. Right? Um, it's a pretty basic and simple and intuitive process. It's called cross products because we look um, crossways to see if two ratios are proportionate. And uh, um, after a few examples, I think you'll really catch on quickly today. So starting with the vocab, um, cross product is the product of the first term in one ratio and the second term in the other. Okay, so that definition to me is a, is a little bit wordy and a little bit confusing. So what I wanna do is I wanna show you a model of that. Say we're given the proportion two fifths equals six fifteenths. Okay, what the cross products property says is if you look diagonal and you multiply those two things, so here's the first term in one ratio and the second term in the other ratio, that's what this is saying, and you multiply them or find the product of them, it should be the same as the second term in my first ratio multiplied by the first term in my second ratio, all right? So um, I like to draw these arrows. That's a good, helpful reminder to me. Um, again, that's where the cross comes from. But two times 15 is equal to 30, and five times six is equal to 30. So um, we would know that these two are proportionate, okay? Because when you multiply um, across, or diagonal, I guess, you'll get the same answer. So that's what the cross products property is. If the cross products are equal, then the ratios form a proportion. All right, let's try an example of that. It says use the cross products to solve the proportion. All right, so again, I'm going to put in these arrows that helps me Remember, so what times m? Well, I'm going to take 15 times m, and I'm going to set that equal to 9 times 5. Okay? Again, because uh, the cross products are equal. Well, 15 times m is 15m equals uh, 9 times 5 is 45. All right? I just multiply these two. And now... I have a simple equation, 15 times what number equals 45? Or if you want to think about it the other way, split your equation in two. What's being done to m? It's being multiplied by 15. So to undo that, I would divide by 15 on both sides. 15 divided by 15 is 1m perfect. Okay, that cancels, equals well, I have 45, then I have to divide that by 15. So m is equal to, well, 15 goes into 45. How many times? Two times would be 30, and another 15 would give us 45. So m would equal 3. Again, we divided each side by 15 to isolate the variable. So in the end, if you were to substitute that in, we would get 9 fifteenths is equivalent to 3 fifths. And um, if you really want to double check or even triple check, try to simplify this. Well, 9 and 15 both have uh, 3 as a common factor. So if you divided 9 by 3, you get 3. If you divided 15 by 3, you get 5. So look at there, 3 fifths is equal to 3 fifths. Okay. Um, this is the basics and this is really the most important part of this lesson. Right, let's look at more of a word problem 
in example two. It says if three binders of the same size take up four inches of space on a shelf, how much space will be needed for 26 binders? Okay. Three binders take up uh, of the same size take up four inches. How much space do you need for 26? All right, so let's rewrite the problem. And total, the, the space needed, we need um, 26 binders. Okay. Three binders take up four inches. So let's write a proportion using the given information, okay? I have three binders and each bind, uh, those three binders take up four inches. I'm gonna set that equal to, well, I know that in the end, I need uh, 26 binders. I'm trying to find how many inches would 26 binders take up, okay? You have to flip to the back of your page now. Okay, so here's three and four. Um, let's solve this proportion. All right, I'm going to use the cross products property. So um, write the proportion. Three fourths equals 26 over x. So I'm going to take three times x. And I'm going to take four times 26. Okay, again, because cross products are equal. Uh, three times x is 3x equals 4 times 26 is 104. And then the last step, I have 3x equals 104. I just need to divide by 3 on both sides to isolate my variable. Okay. So uh, 3x, I need to divide that by 3. And 104, I need to divide by 3. And then 104 divided by 3. Uh, 3 goes into 10 three times, which is 9. I'll subtract and get 1 and bring down my 4. And 3 goes into 14. Uh, let's see. 4 times, which is 12. Okay, subtract, and I'd be left with 2. And I'm going to write it as a fraction. So I'm going to have 34 holes. And left over, I have 2, and my denominator is 3. So 34 and 2 thirds inches is what I'm going to need on my shelf for all the 26 binders. Okay, so um, again, it says to check that, take 4 times 26, well, you'll get 104, and take 3 times 34 and 2 thirds, again, you'll get 104. So. Um, just double checking. Yes, that is the correct answer. All right. Um, go ahead and pause the video here to try the check it out problems on your own. Okay. Here. Uh, let me get my sketch pad here. Six times 14. And you have to set that equal to 7 times m. So 7m equals, and 14 times 6, or 6 times 14 would give you 84. And then divide each side by 7. So 84 divided by 7 would give you a total of 12. And for the second one, it says John filled his new radiator with six pints of coolant, which is to the 10 inch mark. How many pints of coolant would be needed to fill the radiator to the 25th inch level? Okay, so I'm going to write a proportion and I'm going to write down what I know first. So I know he's got six pints of coolant and that takes up 10 inches. I'm going to set that equal to, it asks how many pints of coolant, so I'm trying to figure out how many pints of coolant, so um, keeping my pints on top then, 
would be needed to fill the radiator to the 25 inch level. All right, so I'm gonna match up my inches then on the bottom. Okay, that's kind of important. If you keep track of your labels, uh, it's a little bit easier to set up your proportion. Sometimes it's easy to know, to, to not know, you know, do I put my X on top? Do I put my 25 on top? Well, follow your labels and that'll help you. Okay, so now I'm gonna use the cross products property and 25 times six uh, will give me 150. So 150 equals, don't forget about your equal sign, 10 times x, so 10x. To solve for x, I would just divide by 10 on both sides, and x equals, let me get rid of your zeros, 15. 150 divided by 10 would be 15, and my label, uh, it says how many pints, so 15 pints would be my answer. Yeah. And does that make sense? Well, if six pints is 10 inches, if I were to go to 25 inches, my pints should definitely be more. And it, it is more. Okay. And 25 is more than double of 10. So we would expect that our answer is more than double of six. Well, six double would be 12. And it is more than that. So um, that is logical and it, and it does make sense. All right. That's all it is for the know it notes for this section. Um, if it's still a little bit tricky or new to you, I would definitely advise you to maybe go look at some of the tutorial videos in your online textbook. But that's all I have for today. If you have more questions, uh, let me know, and I will see you next time.